Hello, this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and I am coming to you with another live feed in our debunking diets series because it's so important. This comes up so much, and I know that we're in this group because we want to fix our disordered relationship with food. We want to stop our crazies like binge eating, bulimia, overeating, food addiction, all those sorts of things. But a huge thing that holds us back and a huge thing that I've heard from many of you that's keeping you from actually doing that is that we're in this cycle. We're in this loop of restrictive dieting and thinking that that's the answer and feeling like we need to lose weight first, all those sorts of things. So that's why we're doing this series and just wanted to say welcome, welcome to everyone who is new. Thank you guys so much for being here. So for those of you who don't know me yet, I am Lydia, the lifestyle coach. I am the one who created and runs this group, and I am the boss of the group. <laughs> so I'm, I, myself, I, ha, I was a bulimic for years and years and years. I was an exercise bulimic, um, so although I've coached many women who have um, purging bulimia, no, there are different kinds of bulimia, right? So like, what I would do is I would just binge eat just crazy amounts of food, uncontrollable, like, you know, spoonfuls and spoonfuls of peanut butter and just thinking to myself the whole time, like, what am I doing? How do I stop this? And I'm not like a crazy person. Like, I had total control over other things in my life. I was successful in all sorts of different ways. But then when it came to food, I was a complete disaster and it was freaking me out. Um, and then I got better in like a day. Like the principles that I had been putting together came together in this one beautiful like, okay, that's it. That's the answer. And I am completely free. I'm not talking about managing my eating disorder. I'm not talking about like, you know, avoiding my triggers. Like there is literally nothing that can make me binge. Like nothing. Like I'm just totally done. I'm a normal eater. I have a normal relationship with food. And that's what I do with everyone in the world who is ready to let go of their eating disorder. Hi guys, so fun to see you on. Welcome, welcome. I like all the little, feel free to like put little hearts or little likes or ask questions or say, oh my goodness, I feel that way too, or I don't feel that way, or you know, whatever your feedback is, feel free to write comments. Cause like I'm here live. So like I can like talk to you and see your comments. So, oh, thanks for the hearts, so fun. So you guys, just like total freedom. So that's what I do now. I've helped hundreds and hunt. Oh, this is, I don't, you guys, that's a lot of reactions. That's awesome. I think somebody just like pushed every single reaction on there. That's fun. So with what I do, it's about getting people completely free. Women and men. I talk about women a lot because um, this is something that impacts, you know, women. And a lot of times, you know, there are more women who are dealing with this issue, that sort of thing. But there's actually an interview coming out with a guy that just graduated from the program and is totally binge free after just I think about five or six weeks he was totally binge free so that's coming out I believe next week so yeah that's what we do like we just help you to get completely free and done and it's over so I'm so happy you guys are here thank you for all of your great discussion and contributions and introducing yourself and like we're here to all support each other to that place of complete freedom. So welcome again. And before we get into our topic today, I wanted to celebrate with you guys. So I just got back from Cuba. Um, I scooped up my little girl and went on a cruise to Cuba. Um, and it's so amazing. I wanted to celebrate with you guys like how different it was. So I realized I haven't been on a cruise in like 10 years. And I was thinking like, man, why have I like not even had this in my consideration that I could ever go on a cruise. And I was like, oh, I just got into the habit of like, oh, I don't do that because there's unlimited food and that's not something I can be around. And like, I'm fine with that now. But that was the sort of impact that an eating disorder had on my life. Like, you know, on a cruise, there's just unlimited food all the time. And that was like a huge like trigger for me. I don't believe in triggers and you guys, you know, might know that from some of my other videos, but like, that would have been something that I would have in the past called a trigger. Like I would just be out of control, not enjoying anything. I wrecked so many vacations, you guys, with my eating disorder because like I wasn't having fun. I was obsessing about food the whole time and just a complete wreck. So wanted to celebrate with you and just know, have you know that there is so much freedom on the other side. So in the past, I would have like 
you know, been obsessed with all the food. I would have been looking at menus. I would have been trying not to eat too much, but then, you know, like really, really overeating and going crazy and going back and trying to sneak away from people and get food. Like it would have been just destroying me. And by the end of the cruise, I mean, I would have just obsessively worked out the whole time as well to try to do damage control. And by the end of the cruise, like none of my clothes would have fit. Like I would have, like my body would have been so distorted from just like all the food that I was shoving into my body. Like, oh, so crazy. So I was just had all of this gratitude while I was there. Like I was on the cruise, didn't really think about food. When I would get hungry, I would go down to a little restaurant where you can just get anything that you want at any time, or I would go to the buffet. Whatever was most convenient, it had nothing to do with what food I thought was there or trying to get as much as I could. There were no foods that I was avoiding. There were no foods that I was just like, I didn't even know what was on the menu till I was there. I wouldn't even look at the whole menu. I would just be like, oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. If I got something that I didn't like very much, I would just not eat it. Like just not eat it. Just like, oh, like this isn't very good. So I would just let them take it away. Like that would have freaked me out back in the day. Like just totally freaked me out. Um, I ate dessert most every night. They have great desserts there. Sometimes I'd get a dessert and it wasn't very good, so I wouldn't finish it. Sometimes like I wasn't really hungry, so I would just get dessert if it sounded good or split it with someone else. Like none of this was planned in advance. Like it was just so fun to be on the cruise and to just be free and to be able to just enjoy. And I thought this wasn't even possible. Like you guys, when I was in my years of bulimia and just like, you know, this was just wrecking my life, my hope, my fondest dream, my greatest hope was to just be able to stop binge eating. Like that's all I wanted. That's I wondered if even that was possible. Like I felt like I was just broken and would be for the rest of my life. Like something went awry. There's something wrong with my brain. I didn't even know what was wrong. I was just hoping that maybe someday I could stop binge eating. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that, oh, I can stop binge eating and not have it be a struggle. In fact, not even have the desire at all to binge eat. Like it's just like, sounds really ridiculous to me at this point, no appeal at all, have a normal relationship with food, have my body tell me, oh, you're full, you don't want any more, or, oh, you're hungry, you should go and eat something, and, like, just have it pop up, like, I don't have to be paying attention, am I full now, am I full now, am I full now, it's literally, like, my body is like, oh, you're full, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, Oof, I don't want the rest of this, or I'll save it for later, or whatever. And even if there's like three bites left on my plate, if I'm full, I just don't want the rest. Be able to forget about what I ate during the day, not track anything, like not think about food. Like, you guys, I don't think about food. Like, it's not something I obsess about. It's not something I fantasize about. It's not something that I dread or fear. Like, completely normal eating. I did not think that was possible for me. My dream was just, oh, if I could just find some way to manage my eating disorder, to not binge eat anymore, even if I feel like it all the time, just to be able to resist actually doing it, actually like force feeding myself peanut butter until I'm sick, like that would be a miracle. So I want you to know that yes, that's possible, but then all the rest is possible. As you guys have probably seen with these interviews with people graduating, I, um, for those of you who don't know, this is a, a free group and a free resource and I come out with you know videos every Monday to help you guys along the way. And for those who are just ready to be absolutely done with this, I have a, an, an intensive program that's a one-on-one -on -one to just help you get it done. So you'll see on most of the interviews, it's between like five to eight weeks that people are just completely done with their disordered eating. Um, like Kelly's interview, I mean like after 29 years of binge eating, she was completely done like you know between the 25 35 year mark that's real common so you know even if you've tried everything and you felt like you know this is just who you are and well it's been 30 years and if something was going to work it would have just know there's so many people that it wasn't about that oh I 
and broken and I've tried everything. It's just the things that you tried haven't worked, right? When you do something that works, it is amazing how quickly your brain is happy to change. So anyway, just wanted to celebrate with you back from Cuba and just binge free and bulimia free and totally, I'm not like on some crash diet now that I'm back to try to make up for the extra calories. Like I'm just living my life because I have a great metabolism now so my weight doesn't really change. Like anyway, it's so fun. So I wanted to celebrate and thank you guys so much for these comments and these reactions. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, oh, okay. So so um, there's a comment here from Tasha saying, I need to lose 15 pounds for surgery. I'm not dieting for sure. Awesome. Even not really overeating anymore, but the weight is not shifting. I wish it would because I can't have the surgery I need until I lose 15 pounds. Like, oh, thank you guys for the reactions. This is so fun. And any other comments? So Tasha, thank you so much for bringing that up. Absolutely. So there are a couple things. I mean, like I, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not going to, you know, speak for a doctor. I would say talk to your doctor sort of thing. But a lot of times um, we still have sort of like a, we're not in touch with like our hunger and fullness signals or we think we're not overeating when we are eating more than we need to or we haven't given our bodies enough time so it could be a whole lot of different things like um you guys can schedule a free 45 minute session if you want some more help with this but yes i understand like it's an interesting balance because there's this sort of medical model that equates health with weight which all the evidence is saying now, oh my goodness, if you guys look up like, you know, health at every size, that you absolutely can be healthy no matter kind of what weight and size that you are. But a lot of times the doctor will say like, oh, well, this is what you need to do. You have to lose this weight before you can have this surgery. And I know that's a frustrating place to be in, especially if you are healthy and you're not dieting. So there are ways that you can like refine your eating without dieting. So that's one thing I actually have a VIP program where I work with women once they're done with their eating disorders. It's about, okay, well, how do we become healthier? Or if you do have, if you're not at your set point weight or you have to lose weight for surgery or whatever, like how do you refine your eating, how do you refine your lifestyle so that you get healthier without going to a deprivation place? So those are some things, those are some options, but I know that like there are lots of, you know, different uh, situations out there, so I appreciate you guys commenting. And so let's get let's get to our topic today as well, um, because this part, part six of debunking diets is all about this. Like, what if I have to lose weight for my health, right? So what if you just like, okay, health is important, right? You guys, your health is so important. And if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. So there are lots of different, like, you know, schools of thought. I think that people should be able to do whatever they want to, right? Like, if you want to just, like, eat junk food and not be healthy, that's fine. Like, I, like there's no judgment. You can do whatever you want, right? But I know for a lot of us, a priority is health. So I, first of all, think people should do what they want. But if you want to be healthy, I, that's a completely fine desire. Like, there are some schools of thought that are just like, hey, you know what? No, you should just, you know, eat dozens of cupcakes and just, like, completely release and just, like, you know, do whatever. And in my mind, what I teach is I don't think that's freedom. Like, if you don't want to eat dozens of cupcakes just because you like feel like maybe you want to, like you should be able to do what you want, as in not binge, but then also not you know overeat if you don't want to either. Like you should be able to do things your way, but the dieting and the restrictive mindset doesn't doesn't help. Like it doesn't create an environment where you actually can do what you want because you have that deprivation in place. So we'll go a little bit over that. So it's totally justified to want to be healthy and it's a great desire and that hey i want to be healthy is also a reason that people stay binge eating for years so it may go something like this so you've been binge eating and over the years or even weeks it has really impacted your weight like you're just eating more calories than you would if you weren't binge eating, right? So let's say you're eating like 4,000 calories three times a week when you binge eat. And I would encourage you, like I'm not a proponent of like tracking calories, but I would encourage you just for clarity, just to kind of see how many calories are maybe in one binge. So you kind of have an idea that that clarity could be really important. So, you know, that's, you know, if you're doing 4,000 calories three times a week, that's 624 thousand calories a year. So it's over half a million extra calories. 
And it's often like worse quality foods, right? It's like the kind of food that leads to diabetes and worse. But then because the binge eating has put so much extra weight on our frame, then our health because of how poorly we're eating starts to decline and we're having all the sorts of impact of you know being higher than our set point weight you know which can affect our joints and our inflammation and uh, you know autoimmune disorders all of that okay so then we feel like we must do something so now like it's an emergency it's not just the binge eating but now that our weight and our health you know has just you know gone to places that we don't want it to be we're like okay we have to do something so in the desperation, we turn to what we know, which is dieting, because that's how you lose weight, right? That's how you get healthy, right? Well, let's look at that. The number one cause of eating disorders is dieting. So let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine you are starting a diet tomorrow. You will be very restricted in food and in calories. And this is what you have to stick to for months and months to lose weight. How do you feel now about the rest of today? Do you want to eat salad for dinner? Or because you will never have it again, do you want to eat all the desserts and all the bread that you can because this is the very last night and you're not gonna have it for the rest of the year? And so do you see what this leads to mentally? So how many times have we heard of falling off the wagon and we see our eating get worse just the few days before starting into a diet and then every single time that we slip off or we feel like we've gone outside of our rules, right? So maybe dieting is not the answer for better health because look at what it actually does dieting leads to even worse eating and poorer health and let's say you can even you know white knuckle it and stick to restriction and dieting because you you know have to lose weight for a little while what happens afterwards how many times have you lost the weight but then gained it back plus some and your health is in an even worse place because you're eating worse and worse as you gain the weight back when the binging just comes back with a vengeance right so what is the answer well if we have poor health, then we need to look at what is the biggest cause. So for you, if the binge eating, it's not like extra weight on your body causes poor health. It's that the sorts of foods that we eat, the lifestyle that we have, and especially the binging in the way that we're eating and our mental state, like that's what is a huge threat to our health. So like if the biggest threat to your health is the binge eating, what if you just focused on ending the binge eating. So, but then maybe you say, but I have to lose weight first. Okay. What if you ended the binge eating and just see what happens to your body when you eat half a million calories less of sugar each year? But then if you have the thought, but I feel like I have to let go of restriction to do that, to end the binge eating, and I can't, or I won't lose weight. But what if you just focused on whatever you needed to do to end the binge eating, even if that means not restricting, and just see what happens? The solution is to change it from, what if I have to lose weight for my health, to, what do I need to do for my health? If health is your biggest concern and binging is the biggest threat to it, then focusing on that first is the answer. So when we keep asking, but will this make me lose weight? It keeps us from the very answers of the things that are going to fix our health. So if you guys want help in getting started with that, I mean, I can tell you the solution here. I can tell you what to do. But if it's something like, okay, well, how does that work for me? Or you're trying to put this into practice and you don't see that momentum or like you really do need to improve your health and like binge eating is wrecking your health. Like I would be happy to help you get started in changing your health. So you can do that, change your health, through changing your relationship with food. So I, they, we might be booked right now. You can get on the waiting list if we are. If you do find an open spot, I would absolutely snag it. But um, you can go to lydiawenty.com slash apply and you can book a free 45 minute session. And this session is 
a breakthrough session to get you that first step to recovery solid, which is clarity. Um, and so if there are some available, we try to make as many openings available as possible because I know there's a huge demand. I mean, the other day we had 47 women apply in one day to, you know, have a session and to be part of the program. So be patient with us. If you don't see a spot for a while, get on the waiting list. I'll shoot out an email when there are some more openings, and then you can check back too. But if you would like some help on getting that first step, you can absolutely go there. Um, and, oh, Jess, hey, I see that you're, you're commenting, dieting restricting definitely led me into an eating disorder. You have changed my life, Lydia. Heart. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Jess. Like, that means a lot, you guys. Like, I love what we do. Like, I... I'm grateful every single day that I am done with my eating disorder. It was the biggest obstacle of my life. It was wrecking my life, my relationships. Like the, I, the thought of dying as a binge eater, suffering with this for the rest of my life was just so horrible. And I am just thankful every day. Like I am free and happy in ways that I didn't even expect. Like it's so good to be free, you guys. So I love what I do. Thank you guys for all of your, your kind words and your sweetness. And like, this is the cause. Like there are so many, so, so many people in this world that just like, that's the thing holding them back. All these reactions are amazing, you guys. I just think you're like pushing all the buttons. This is great. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I have seen women do such amazing things. Like, okay, so just a couple of things like the women graduating from my program and just even the last month, like one had a children's book that they had written and like never published. And like before she was even done with the program, she was publishing it and getting the illustrations. I've had people start new careers. I've had people do certifications that they had been doing, you know, had been waiting to do. I've had people have babies that they felt like, well, I could never have a baby once I had this eating disorder. Like, it's amazing how your life just opens up when you don't have this huge thing in the way that's sucking the quality of your life out of like every aspect. So anyway, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and Tasha just wanted to loop back as well after we, you know, went through our subject today that it's with medical, so I don't want to say too much about medical anything, right? But I would say, like, a lot of health professionals maybe aren't educated on health at every size, or they're just going sort of by the book of what they know. Like, you know, I I have known women who have gone to the doctor, and the doctor is just like, oh, well, you have to lose weight for your health, right? But they know that dieting has never done anything for their health. Like, it's always been, like, a bad thing for their health to be dieting. And so I've had women who have gone to other doctors who understand better and who don't make them look at the number on the scale and who support them in healing their relationship with food. And then their health does improve and they let them do the things that they need to medically, whether that be, you know, a whole range of things that we need to do. So know that there's more than one opinion out there. There's more than one doctor out there. There's, you know, you want to find somebody who is really ready to serve you and who aligns with, you know, your principles and what you know is helpful for you. So I would just absolutely encourage you guys to do that. There's always going to be people in your life that are going to say, no, do it this way because I know better for you than you know for you. And I would just suggest don't listen to them, right? Like, do what you feel, what you know. Nobody knows what is better for you than you. And know that there is hope and there is freedom. And if you would like um, help, again, you can go to uh, LydiaWenty.com slash apply um, to see if there is a spot you can snag for a free 45-minute session. And again, there are videos coming out every Monday, and we will post them here. There's a free ebook on the website. There's this group. There's all sorts of cool things, you guys. Um, you you might have seen like uh, the playback of a webinar I did a while back. Feel free to comment on this if you haven't seen that. And we can send that your way. Like, I just want everyone who wants to be free to be free. So, mwah, Lydia, the Lifestyle Coach, signing off. Thanks for being on, you guys. Bye.